Hey y'all, I'm Blaine Phillips. And I'm Jason LeVan. We're married, like just a minute ago, but we've been together for 14 years. We have a teenage daughter. Which means she's basically an adult, right? We're also growing a business on the side together. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. Through all of that, we've learned how to improve so many aspects of our lives and show up in an amazing way. So we decided to host a podcast to share our journey with you. It's called Let's Do Life Together, because that's just what we want to do with you. So if you could use some tips and tricks on how to make life a little smoother, then you're in the right place. Come on in and let's do life. People, it's what's for dinner. Is, what? Right? What's happening? <laughs> no, that's not the episode. Hmm. No, the title of the episode is Make Room at the Table. How did you get people, that's what's for dinner, from right. Make Room at the Table? Right. It's like beef, that's what's for dinner. Is that a thing? Mm-hmm. No, Except we don't eat the people, right? What are you talking about? Oh, my goodness. I shouldn't, you shouldn't lead in. When you lead in, it's very strange. I should. We go down a rabbit hole when you lead in. I never know what's going to happen. Let's take a poll. Let, no, a poll. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our next episode on the podcast, episode 64, where we bypass Jason's shenanigans and enter into the make room at the table episode. And we're not making room for beef or pork, although I guess sometimes that's on the menu. We're making room for people. People in which we're not going to eat. People in which we're going to enjoy fellowship with. (laughs) Oh, boy. So one of our goals as a family, when we sat down last year, at the beginning of 2019, we, and I'm going to be honest, I'm pretty sure I led this one because Jason would never, since he's an extreme introvert, maybe not extreme, just an introvert. And I don't think Sienna would have necessarily led it either. Not because she didn't enjoy it, but she just maybe wouldn't have thought of it. So I led the train, but the family all agreed and they were all on board. And I wanted to work in a new focus, if you will, for our 2019. We weren't like crazy about it because it didn't happen every single month. But the goal was to try to invite a new friend, acquaintance, coworker, new friend, potential friend, teacher, insert, whatever, a new human and their family over for dinner at least once a month. That was, I just thought like there's so many people that come in and out of your lives that you can get to know better and they have interesting stories. I find people so interesting anyway. And a great way to do that is to bring them into your home and sit down for a meal together and get to know them. So that was something that we kind of set the intention to do. And I don't know that I have the exact numbers, but I'm going to go with we hit at least nine. I think at least nine out of 12. What do you think? I don't, I mean, I don't know exactly, but we definitely did a pretty solid effort throughout the year of having new friends, people, all the above over for dinner. Well, yeah, definitely more times than not, for sure. So we actually, we have like this monthly checklist. I know people are probably surprised, but we, <laughs> we have a checklist. <laughs> so one of them is, one of the things on that list is a dinner invite. So uh, we definitely hit it more times than not. And we tried to spread that out, meaning like we tried to get different ones of us. Like I could pick someone every month. I have no problem. Like I talked to the maintenance man at the apartment, to the stranger on the street. I, my mom would say I would talk to a fence post. So I could certainly come up with someone each month to invite, but I didn't want it to always be people on my list per se. So we really tried to think about Jason and people that maybe he interacts with that we don't know or know as well. And Sienna, there are people that she interacts with, um, her youth group leaders or people at school that we don't get the opportunity to know as well as she does. And so it's a great chance to get to know them. Like they're hanging out with your kids. They're having an influence in your life. You probably want to get to know them as well. So we didn't, I don't know how the divide went, but we did try to be intentional with like dispersing it. Like, hey, Jason, is there someone on your mind or on your heart that you want to be the dinner guest for the month and so forth? So it was a little more even, Stephen, if you will. Yeah. And I think some months it was more obvious of like who it should be just based on whatever the circumstances were. But I think going in, a lot of it was kind of focused on people involved in. Sienna's life as just kind of a starting point, but um, yeah, it could be new neighbors, new, just new people that kind of came in, 
into your circle or into your world and um, getting to know them better. Just sit down and just invite. People often don't ever invite people up to do things. So. Yeah, it's so true. I think you're right. It did start with Sienna. I mean, as kids get older, they're kind of responsible for I mean, they take ownership of their own social calendars. When she was younger, I scheduled the play dates. Like, play dates didn't happen if I didn't already know the mom and we didn't work it out and the kids showed up and we just put them together to play. I'm sure she probably played with people she didn't even necessarily want to back in the day because it was more about me and her socialization and whatnot. But as they get older, they're at school and there's no class parties in middle school and they're getting invited to things in different circles of friends and people. And you just, you don't always know youth group is separate from us now. And you, these people are still having an impact on your kids' lives and they're involved. So I wanted to know about it. I wanted to know who they were. And can you tell exactly who they are and what their story is from one dinner? No, but you can learn a lot about a person from one dinner. And I don't know if people do that enough anymore. Like Jason said, like, do people like when ask yourself, when is the last time you had someone over to your home for a meal? You can make it brunch if you want, whatever it is that wasn't like already a part of your circle. Like there aren't your family or your friends that come over all the time anyway, like a new person that you want to get to know better. I'm not suggesting you invite a stranger off the street, but someone that already has a place in your life, but you want to get to know better. I'm betting it's probably been a long time. And it kind of had for us until we set the intention to focus on that in the year. And oh my gosh, it was so rewarding. Like it really was. I'm not even just saying that to make the episode. I would tell you the truth. Like that's how we roll around here is the truth. It really was. Like I think everyone that we had over was dinner and some were weeknights, some were weekends. Like I would usually hit them up with, hey, how are you? Like we'd love to have you guys over for dinner. And we tried our best. I mean, we always did the family. Like, so for example, one of um, the invites was Sienna's a past teacher of hers. Um, Not a current teacher because that feels weird and wrong, but it was a past teacher who she really enjoyed. And we had kind of started to get to know um, at track meets and whatnot. And we reached out and I invited her and her husband. Um, No, Sienna never met her husband and we did never met her husband. No way to know him, but we invite them and you invite people with their kids and you invite their family unit to come and hey here's a couple dates can we'd love to have you over for dinner are you available and then we find something that works for them and you set the date to have them over (laughs) yeah i think i kind of broke it down into like two categories so it's either people that tina's spending time with that we just want to get to know them better and if you think about you know, teenagers and they have these best friends or, you know, this group that they call best friends. They want to start hanging out and doing sleepovers and things like that. Well, for us, we want to be comfortable sending her there. Um, So it's kind of that category of getting to know them better just for that kind of comfort level. And then the other category is what I would call kind of dating. So, If you're trying to, you know, kind of get into a new circle of friends or just, you know, just kind of branching out outside of where we were and meeting new people and just having positive influences and positive people that we want to start hanging out with. Well, this was kind of a a date to you're inviting that couple and maybe they have kids or not and, and just get to know them. And, you know, maybe that'll lead to more regular dinners, which is fine. We're not saying you only, there's one and done, you know, you invite them and then move on next month at somebody else. It's, it's just a preliminary kind of, uh, interaction, I guess. Yeah. And do you know after one dinner, if there's someone you want to welcome into your circle or not? Not necessarily. Or maybe you do. Or maybe you know that you don't. (laughs) Or maybe you do. Maybe you know that you don't. And that's okay. But it's just, it's just a cool thing. And it really brought like all of us, all of us enjoyed it separately and together for different reasons. And 
my biggest advice to you would be to expand who you invite for sure. But when they're there, concentrate on being more interested than interesting. It's not about you. Stop talking, which you know I love to talk a lot, but I really do work to be intentional with that and not talk and just ask questions and listen and be interested in their life because people are really cool and they've got amazing stories and things that they've experienced and hardships that they've walked through and there's tons to learn from them and it's the building blocks for creating new relationships, whether it's for your kids and now you're comfortable for them to go hang out with that family or you're not, or it's new friendships that you're fostering. We've built a few of our dinners have evolved into really good friendships for us this year. And we're working our way into a new circle of like-minded people who have shared interests in what we're doing. And that feels good because I'll tell you, there was a season where we lost our circle and it broke my heart. And I wasn't sure that we would find not something like it, but we would find a different one that fit for us. And it feels like we're getting there now. And part of these dinners was a catalyst to get there. So it's just, this is to tell you what we've done and to encourage you to try it for yourself. Do you have to make the commitment for doing one a month? No, try a couple a year, just try it and see. And let me rest your mind right now. You do, it does not need to be fancy. I'm not talking gravy boats and paper and not paper, cloth napkins, just, just a meal. And your house doesn't need to be fancy. We get so caught up in this stuff that just doesn't matter. That keeps us from interacting with other people. My house is too small. My house isn't as clean as someone else's or, insert whatever your concern is here. I'm not the best cook. Order pizza. Like it doesn't matter. It's about the fellowship and being with other people because I guarantee that spot on your wall that you're so concerned about, they don't even notice. Like, and if they do, who cares? They're not judging you by the stain in your carpet. Like they're just happy to see you. So your house doesn't need to be any certain way. We live in a two bedroom apartment now <laughs> and the meals don't need to be fancy. We've we've had enchiladas before. Like it doesn't need to be fancy to have a great time. But I do think you need to invite them to your house or, or to where you're living instead yeah. of saying, let's go out to dinner somewhere. Because in your house, it's just, it's quieter you can spend as much time or as little time as you want and it's less expensive honestly and it's just i think it's easier to kind of get to know people if it's in your house it's a slice of who you are and for me the southern girl it's a it's a hospitality thing like to host someone is impactful like when someone invites me to their house because they want to have me over like that that means something to me that carries a different weight than hey let's go grab tacos at the local mexican restaurant together like that's cool too but it's it carries a different weight when you have them over so no that's a good point yeah, I mean, it can be fun to go out and that can be part of your relationship going forward or overall, but yeah, hosting or, you know, going to somebody's house is just, it's a different level of intimacy, I guess. Yeah. So will you do it? Will you, can we officially challenge you over the course of this next month? We'll give you a whole month. Just pick one person, family, couple, whatever it is that you have not had over to your home before and invite them over. Say, hey, do you want to come have some pizza with me or enchiladas or your famous lasagna or I don't care what it is. Just come break bread with me and let's fellowship together. I would love to hear it. I really think it will impact your life and their life. And it's a cool thing to start. And it's a new year, so it's always time to start cool. It's always a good time to start cool new things, right? Come tell me. Come tell me if you'll take the challenge. Shoot me an email. Find me over on the socials. Slide into my inbox and say, hey, I'm here for it. Here's who I'm inviting. And then can you tell me what you're making also? Because girls are always looking for a new recipe. I'm just saying. (laughs) All right. I can't wait to hear about it. I can't wait to hear who you have over and how it went. And maybe it's the beginning of a booming new friendship. And I mean, I'm open. We're free. So if you want to invite us, I'm fine to take the invitation as well. (laughs) Until next time.